In the last lesson, I mentioned that I've added in a class here, and this is a Bootstrap class. So let's go ahead and add Bootstrap into our website. And the th good thing about Bootstrap is it allows us to create our websites quicker. So it takes care of a lot of the lifting that we'd normally have to do within our website design process, and it just simply simplifies that and allows us to more rapidly and quickly develop our websites. And we're, what we're going to be using within Bootstrap, so we're going to be using its CSS file, and essentially Bootstrap is a series of CSS and a JavaScript file. And we have an option here to link to the CDN. CDNs are web, uh, web accessible files that are meant to be shared and to bring in these libraries really quickly into your web projects. You can also download it and link it to your website locally, also uploading the files with the rest of your web files. So there's a few options when you're wanting to set up Bootstrap, but usually the quickest way is just to grab the link. And there are some benefits to actually getting the CDN version because if other websites are using it as well, if, um, if it gets cached within your browser, you'll have a quicker load time. And it's already using that minified version. So this, these are the advantages of using a CDN. And then of course, that you don't have to go through the trouble of downloading and bringing it over to the same file folder. So a little bit quicker, but at the end of the day, the effects are the same thing. And when you're adding in your Bootstrap CSS file, notice that I've placed it above my regular CSS file. And this gives me the ability that if I want to actually customize some of my CSS and overwrite some of the Bootstrap CSS, I can do that within my CSS file. Because a lot of times if you place it ahead of it and inadvertently maybe use some of the Bootstrap CSS, well that's going to overwrite your CSS and it could leave you scratching your head. So best practice is always to place the libraries that you want to use first and then your customization CSS file afterwards. So now that I've got that in place, this is going to allow me to build this website quicker. And the good thing about Bootstrap is that's all mobile and responsive. Uh, so mobile ready and fully responsive and it's got a lot of really neat components. So now that I've saved it and if I refresh it, well we don't really see much difference here within the website because I don't think the container really has a lot of uh, CSS styling within it. Uh, so this is why it's there's not a lot within it but it's more about building out the structure of your website and getting it ready for the rest of the Bootstrap library and the Bootstrap CSS to be implemented and added into your website. And we're going to use this if we're listing out products where we can easily use the Bootstrap grid system to lay out a list of products within our website really easily. So that's one of the advantages as well of using the Bootstrap system. Basically what it's done is it's slightly indented, it's created a little bit of padding around there and if we go out here we can see that there isn't that much of a difference, but we can see that this content now has been brought in. So if I do go ahead, if I inspect it, we can see that we've got a maximum width. The content is centered, the container information is centered. So this is preparing our website to be bootstrap ready. And because now that we've added in this container, the rest of our content is still left aligned. So what we want to do now is add in the, con the container into the other sections of our website so that they align in the same way as this one did. So this is where we bring in this container and we can add it into our header section. And we can add it into our welcome message and we can add it into our footer. So now let's take a look at our website and now it should be centered uh, all the content should be centered in and proper aligning once again. So we're ready to go with building out the rest of our website. We've got all of our bootstrap components up and running and set up. And just one other note that if we ever want to remove the container, maybe if we wanted our footer to go all the way across, we can really easily do that by removing that class. 
and then we can create our own class and update our website accordingly. So maybe I'm going to leave it out of there because maybe we want our footer to always be 100% across the bottom of our page and we might even want the same thing for our header uh, so we could do a fluid container as well. Uh, so a few different options here when it comes to bootstrap and building out our website.